The government's spill response team sounds an upbeat note, the latest capture numbers from the wellhead cap in the Gulf. Also, the president is sending a message of optimism after discussing the Gulf disaster with his cabinet members. And the outgoing U.N. climate chief sees a long road ahead before an international treaty adopts the needed carbon cuts. From the Energy News Center in Washington, D.C., this is the Energy Report with Susan McGinnis. And good afternoon. I'm Tyler Suters in for Susan McGinnis. Thanks for joining us for this Monday edition of the Energy Report. The oil leak on the floor of the Gulf seems to be tapering off, at least for now. But the man in charge of the Deepwater Horizon cleanup effort says there is no quick fix for containing and cleaning what he calls an aggregation of smaller spills. Coast Guard Admiral Thad Allen says the cap on the wellhead in the Gulf is keeping up to 462,000 gallons of oil each day from leaking into the Gulf waters. That total is almost twice as much as Friday's estimate. Those 462,000 gallons could be anywhere from 37 percent to 77 percent of the daily output from that leak. Allen also says the nature of the spill and the cleanup operations have shifted in the past couple of weeks, with about 1,500 local fishing vessels and work boats joining the Coast Guard skimming operations. And we're dealing with basically four areas of operations. One is the subsea area where we're trying to do with uh, containment on the well. The second is trying to deal with the oil that's on the surface above the well where it comes up in large quantities and can be dealt with effectively through mechanical skimming and in-situ burning. Uh, we all know about the recovery on shore, uh, but the, but the uh, emphasis over the last couple of weeks has shifted to the, period, the area between the shoreline and out about 50 miles, because what's happened over the last uh, several weeks, this spill has disaggregated itself. We're no longer dealing with a large monolithic spill. We're dealing with an aggregation of hundreds or thousands of patches of oil that are going a lot of different directions. And we've had to adapt, and we need to adapt to be able to meet that threat. Admiral Allen also elaborated on his statement yesterday that the cleanup would last into the fall. He now says the oil on the surface can be cleaned up within months. However, he acknowledges that it could take years to get all of that oil out of marshlands as well as other local habitats. And following a meeting with his cabinet members and Admiral Allen, President Obama says he wants all hands on deck in the cleanup of the spill. The president admits the oil would damage the Gulf Coast and the economic impact will be substantial and ongoing. But the area, he says, will bounce back. The one thing I'm absolutely confident about is that, uh, as we have before, we will get through this crisis. Uh, and it, one of the things that I wanted to make sure we understand is that not only are we going to uh, control the damages to the Gulf Coast, but we want to actually use this as an opportunity to re-examine and work with states and local communities to restore uh, the coast in ways that uh, actually enhance uh, the livelihoods and the quality of life for people in that area. Also from the president today, he says EPA will be monitoring the air and water quality in the area and also testing seafood to make sure no toxins are being passed on to consumers. There is a grim outlook this afternoon from the outgoing U.N. climate chief. Ivo de Boer says he no longer expects the world to agree to carbon reductions that scientists say are necessary by 2020. Speaking to reporters during ongoing climate talks in Bonn, Germany this week, de Boer says he doesn't see the U.N.'s negotiation process, quote, delivering adequate mitigation targets in the next decade. He says that he does, however, expect adequate long-term carbon cuts because industrialized nations say they favor cutting emissions by 80 percent by 2050, and also developing countries have pledged to contribute. De Boer says commitments by industrialized countries so far amount to only 13 to 14 percent of greenhouse gases by 2020. As we've reported, scientists generally say emissions should be 25 to 40 percent below 1990 levels by 2020 to avoid any dangerous atmospheric warming. Exploratory teams are now back inside the Massey Energy's upper Big Branch coal mine in West Virginia. Investigators there are looking for clues as to what caused the deadly blast that killed 29 workers back in April. But the investigation will have to wait until the exploratory teams work their way through the mine and deem it safe. MSHA says the teams are finding normal gas readings and have examined three sets of seals in the mine. It had been entered just twice since rescuers last removed the final bodies following the explosion. Two four-member teams of state, federal and Massey workers made a pair of trips on Wednesday of last week, but they all had to evacuate the mine because of high methane levels at the time. 
Mirant Mid-Atlantic is now fighting back against one Maryland County's new carbon tax. The company is filing suit against Montgomery County, Maryland. The recently passed law charges $5 per ton of CO2 for companies that emit more than 1 million tons in that county. Right now, Mirant is the only company to which that law applies. Its coal-burning power plant emits roughly 3 million tons of carbon annually. And one Montgomery County Council member says that that total accounts for 25 percent of the entire county's CO2 emissions. Mirant argues that the carbon tax is unconstitutional. It now wants an injunction to stop it. Also, carbon emissions in the state are already regulated. That's because Maryland is one of the 10 northeastern states that cap carbon emissions under the REGI system. This afternoon, Arriva and Siemens now say the new reactor they are building in Finland will be ready to begin startup in late 2012. You're looking at pictures of the construction process of the OL3 reactor taken last year in Finland. The companies say they'll be ready to load fuel at the Generation 3 Plus reactor by the end of 2012. With testing required to lead up to operation, that means the unit will actually start generating electricity, at least on this schedule, in 2013. OL3 will be the first new nuclear reactor to come online in Western Europe in more than 15 years. When the work here started back in 2004, OL3 was supposed to start up in 2009, but a series of problems has caused delay there. Well, we'll take a look at some of the events scheduled around the Washington, D.C. area for Tuesday. First of all, 8 a.m. Eastern, Deloitte is holding a two-day energy conference. The discussions will involve energy and climate issues that will run all day at the Gaylord National Resort at National Harbor. At 9 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums is holding a briefing featuring national and Gulf region experts. They'll be providing updated information from the front lines of the wildlife rescue and rehabilitation effort in the Gulf. That's taking place on Capitol Hill in Rayburn House Office Building B330. And finally, at 10 a.m. Eastern, the Senate Judiciary Committee is holding a hearing examining whether recent court decisions and liability caps encouraged irresponsible behavior from the oil industry. That's taking place in the Dirksen Senate office building. And that is this Monday edition of the Energy Report. A reminder, you can follow us throughout your day on Facebook and Twitter. You can also reach our team here in the nation's capital anytime. And the address is right here at the bottom of your screen. It's contact at plainskies.com. From all of us here in the Energy News Center, we're glad you're with us. I'm Tyler Suters, and you're watching Clean Skies News.